uppercut from now you know he switches up and now you see the legs of Sometimes oh, it's oh, big right hand there from Inoue, and Maloney takes it. You can hear the thoughts that oh, shot right down there. goes Maloney on a quick counter. Four. And round seven. Oh, oh, big right hand from Naoya Inoue, and Maloney is down and hurt. It's over. It is over. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Wow, wow, wow. Inoue. This is Tissue Controversy with FightView360.com. Got my colleague on the line, Big J, Jason Maloney. The dream has become a nightmare. 21 and 2 with 18 KOs, 29 years old. Was stopped a week ago via seventh round knockout. He was losing on the cards 5360, 5459, 5459. It was for the um, WBA Super and the IDF. Oh, and the Ring Magazine 118-pound Bantamweight titles. So before me and my colleague right here, Big J, started the video, we were thinking and talking like, well, where does he go next? What does he do? And, you know, how does a loss like this, especially in the devastating fashion that he lost here, let's play this replay of this knockout again. Like, where do you go from here? And round seven. Oh, a big right hand from Naoya Inouye. Maloney is down and hurt. It's over. It is over. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Now, during the build-up to, toward the fight and also on social media, actually mainly on social media, Jason Maloney, the odds started swaying in his favor in regards to not saying that, you know, people thought like, you know, overwhelmingly that he was going to win. But there was some, some, some concerns about his size and no, you having the layoff. Even here, we talked about it. The um, the um, eye, you know, surgery that he had, he pretty much had his face broken by Nonito Denaer. And what we saw was that in showed us why he is world class and why guys like no disrespect. Jason Maloney is not on his level. So the question is now, what does Jason Maloney do next? But also, before we move on, we're going to be doing a fight week preview on another significant fight because his brother, Andrew Maloney, is taking on Joshua Franco again next week on the undercard of, um, of uh, Tim Crawford versus Kel Brook. We are going to have a Zoom call with all of those fighters sometime next week. We haven't got the date yet. As you can see right now, it is November the 8th, 2020, Sunday, 2.07 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So sometime in the next few days or so, there's going to be a live stream involving all of the fighters for that card. And yes, we're going to be here next week covering those fights. And there's going to be a post-fight post Zoom as well. So, Big J, what's next for um, um, Jason? Like, What's going on? Where does he go from here? Well, I'll tell you the one thing he shouldn't do is that come home to Australia and fight local talent. He shouldn't do that. I've, I've looked, I've done a bit of research, and there's a fighter called Paul Butler, who's a former IBF Bantamweight title holder. I think Manny Rodriguez beat him for the title. I mm -hmm. think that would be a good get back, get back on the horse fight for Jason Maloney. I've that's, covered that's Paul Butler before. Do. Let me pull him up. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, so I think he's had like, I think his record's what 31 and two or something like that. Um, I think he's a two-division champ. I think he won a title on the flyweight as well as the bantamweight. Um, it looks like he's probably getting past his best now. But I think that would be a good get back on the horse, get back into it, uh, mm. fight for uh, J Jason Maloney. Um, or his other option is to move to 122 because, let's be honest, as long as is around, he ain't going to be no world champion. Yeah. So, or, you know, I mean, there's uh, Casemiro. I mean, he's, is he still number one contender for Casemiro? No, he well, lost he that. that he lost that? Okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, he lost that. He lost that. Yeah, so, I mean, he could... I mean, Danae is fighting... What's the WBC champion's name? What's it? Norden Obali. Obali, Obali, yeah. So, maybe he can make an argument to fight the winner or loser of that, but I don't... I mean... But what, what incentive? Like, like, right now, Jason Maloney doesn't look like he can compete with those guys. You know, like, what does he do at... How old? Let's see. How old is he? He's a uh, 29. The, 29. Win the window is closing because when you're in those lower weight divisions, you know, they get a lot of miles on them, you know, because of the high pace action, you know, that they fight at, you know. Mm. And 122, there's so much politics up there. I'm looking at it right now. I can't see where he gets his title shot at. 
You know, or well, even, or even really campaign to get a title shot. You know. Well, there's always IBR. He's ranked number two of them. Yeah, That's but 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 on a global standpoint, the IBO is not really recocognized. So it's like, yeah, you'll get that belt, but this. That's looked at as a trinket belt. It doesn't have any, you know, yeah, over in, in the Oceanic Territory, meaning, you know, New Zealand and in Australia, the, I, the IBO makes its bones. They got some respect over there. But over here in the States where the Maloney's trying to, you know, plant their flag, that ain't going to get them nowhere. You know, the IBO gets put in the bin over here. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, I mean, really, really it's up to him. But, I mean, I'd be advising, you know, fight Paul Butler or possibly go to one. Yeah, I say, so, you know, maybe they just go ahead and do it again. You know, maybe they just go ahead and just rebuild him back up, you know, to try to see if he can be in a no-ye. I mean, after all, his brother's getting the rematch, you know, against yeah, a Franco, sure. and he didn't look, I don't think that fight needed a rematch. So in this case, you know, two fights, as you said, Paul Butler, you know, um, fuck it. You know, you can even go Joshua Greer again. You know, sit like like, visit that. Yeah, well, he never fought Joshua. Exactly, that's so what I'm that, saying. Visit yeah. that; they can do that. Yeah, you know that yeah, that can that can be a crazy. nice little undercard, you know, fight. Maybe that that can actually lead a ESPN Plus card, a little small card, you know. Yeah, a little small card. Yeah, well, in fairness um, to uh, to Andrew, he was a champion when Franco beat him. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was an upset. Franco wasn't suspected to win. So and yeah, so that that's the reason why that rematch is happening. You even, but, ha you even uh, have. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, we're, we're focusing on Jason. We'll focus on Andrew in the next video. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's as I said, you know, Paul Butler, Joshua Greer, you know. Um, I mean, Joshua Green needs to rebuild because he got his ass kicked as well, unexpectedly. Yeah, he's so. back next week on that Crawford card, if I'm correct. He's back. Oh, is he, oh, is he fighting? Um, no, it's just I don't not, nobody of note. It's like a um, it's a comeback fight since he lost, so it's nobody of note. Oh, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, well, that could be that could be a fight. Those boys could uh, duke it out. Um, and see, see there you go. So that's that's two fights right there. That's a nice little path right there for him. Paul Butler, you know, Joshua Greer, see what's going on with that. You know, you got a Charlie Edwards, you know, even a um, Zelani Tite, you know, who was supposed to be in the World Boxing Super Series, but lost his belt to Casimero. Mm. And all these boys, um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good guess here, haven't fought. I mean, didn't, I mean, didn't Paul Butler just fight like last month? Yeah, he three fought three recently. Years? He fought recently. He fought recently. But what about the, uh, Charlie, Charlie Edwards? Has he, has he fought like, like at all this year? No, he's been sitting and doing nothing. I believe he's fought recently. Put it this way, they're available. They're on the, they're on a the timeline. They're on the same timeline where, you know, they can fight in March, April. Yeah, but they haven't been inactive, so Jason wouldn't have that advantage. Is what I was getting. At. Yeah, so no. Fought. Okay, good, good. Uh, well, that, that's that's actually probably good because he had more chance of getting the yeah. fight. Than he shouldn't, but but remember, they gotta make these nothing. fights, and the fighters gotta accept them. The the money's gotta be there, you know. But one thing I don't think that he should do is. He shouldn't take a steep drop down in competition, and he shouldn't, you know, take a layoff. Like keep the momentum going, you know. That's what I. That's what I said. I mean, people. Some people said this on Facebook. I come home and fight the Australian bantamweight champion. Why the bloody hell would he do that? Nah, keep the momentum. He was just prime time ESPN. Uh, yeah, um, and for a start, I mean, the Australian bantamweight champion's fighting. Brock Jarvis for a featherweight international title in December anyway, so there goes that idea. Yeah, uh, but, yeah just some people on social media said, I'll come home, like, what the bloody hell would he do that? Well, so once again, um, we're going to be here um, next week with a Zoom with um, Andrew Maloney and get his thoughts on, you know, his brother and what's been going on because basically Jason Maloney has disappeared. He put out a little statement here. Let me pull it up on his social media. And then, you know, we haven't seen him since. So, it says right here, here let's go full screen. Um, Dare to be great. This time I fell short. Thank you to my team, Tony um, Toji. Um, Alexander Hyder, he's thanking his team and top rank for giving me the opportunity. I'll dust myself off and I'll be back stronger and better than ever and I will become world champion. So... You know, he has put nothing out. He was heavily tweeting and heavily active on social media up until the defeat. But, of course, you know, go home, clear your head. Because, remember, he's got to come back out into media next week to support his brother. 
So you know, yeah, well, he's, he's still be, he'll still be in Vegas. He'll still be in Vegas. He hasn't come home yet. He yeah, exactly. So, so, but, but, but what I'm getting at is that you know, so this was good for him to take this week off because he's gonna have media all in his face next week. Ask him about the defeat. So he's got to relive all. Oh that yeah, shit. for sure, for sure. So he's probably just taking a week in in the Vegas hotel wherever they're staying in the bubble and just you know taking it easy as he should be so yeah because next because, week uh, he's going to be in his brother's corner and he's going to have the you know the espn reporters you know well tell us about your loss and what's next if there's anybody you want to fight who would it be is a comeback fight when are you going home so you know i know I, I can imagine that would be stressful you know after losing oh, yeah. you know and then you gotta Absolutely. you know so you know so good for him to take this week and you know these couple of weeks off because the fight's not until next week and just you know stay low-key you know, just get your head yeah, right. Make sure you're not a distraction to your brother, you know? That's right. Especially after such a huge build-up. Or even Timothy Bradley said that it's a 50-50 fight. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm telling you, it was, you know, it was, uh, the pressure people had to be high because... Me on the comments, so people were slaughtering me in the comments saying, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Well, Timothy Bradley, who's a world, world Hall of Fame fighter, is at 50-50, so I was the only one thinking that. So, no, I, I, I told you, like the the week or the week, then the week before the fight, the tide started to turn. People were like, "Hold up, this guy may have a chance." But of course, we saw, and no, yeah, he's on another level. So, uh, yeah, closing no, closing no, thoughts. No, he's on another level, but it's going to take a very special fight of the bumpy morph. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, yeah, he's just in a class of his own. That's why he's a pound for pound fighter. So you don't yeah. get pound for pound fighter for, for nothing. So, all right, closing thoughts. Uh, well, you know, Jason, Jason will bounce back from this. As you said, I think you're right. I mean, considering that the, his age you know, in those lower divisions, once you hit 30, you're starting to get, you know, past your best, so you need to do something and, you know, whatever, quick. Um, but, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be back. He, he, won't, he won't let this, you know. You, you take a loss, you get, you, get knocked, you get knocked off, you get back on the horse, and you keep riding, you know. Yeah. You're not going to stop because you lose one fight. So, you know. Yeah. He, he, he went he went seven rounds with you know what the top five pound for pound best fighter in the world. You got you got to take your hat off to that. I mean, most guys wouldn't last. Most guys didn't last two rounds. So he lasted seven, three times as long. So you got to look at the positives. Yeah. All right. Well, once again, we'll be here next week with um, um, Franco versus uh, Maloney two covers also with a whole bunch of fight week stuff. It's a busy media week next week and um, me and Jay are working on getting you some interviews from guys like Bob Arum and other you know media insiders promoters managers etc I'm T Street Controversy this is Big Jay with FightView360.com please subscribe